All right, welcome. So today I will be doing this Butterfinger recipe, which I'm going to be trying to replicate from video. And I've always been like, you see these people, they're good chefs. They can do all these amazing creations. It's like, oh, we make it look so simple. But I'm going to attempt to do these types of videos of recreating these tutorials that I see on YouTube and whatnot, except I'm not a professional. So I don't know these tips and tricks that actually make it look so good. So what you see me do is probably gonna be a lot closer to anything you're gonna try and do. So let's begin. For this recipe, you're gonna want one cup of sugar smoothly put in. Next up, what you're gonna to wanna to do is add some light corn syrup, half a cup to be specific. His recipe literally says corn syrup, but I do believe he meant light corn syrup. Removing the light corn syrup from the measuring cup can be quite messy as you can see. Then, once you have done that, what you're going to want to do is add a quarter cup of purified water. Up next, you're going to want to add some dark color maple syrup. This is going to make these Butterfingers taste a lot better. And you're going to want to add two tablespoons of it. You will want to bring your pot to a medium sized burner and have it set to either medium high or medium low. I will be using a $15 candy thermometer I got at the store and what you're going to be aiming for is 140 degrees celsius. Now for the peanut butter and what would a butterfinger be without some peanut butter? Next up you're going to need to add one and a half cups of peanut butter and you're going to want to have to like really get it in there. I prefer just sliding it in the side and just smoothing it over. There's going to be some air bubbles but it'll be fine. The peanut butter that you're going to be wanting to use is going to be unsalted because you're also going to be adding one teaspoon of fine sea salt to it. However, I really looked and couldn't find any unsalted peanut butter. And so from my trials and errors, I've always just found that using standard smooth peanut butter and just adding the salt anyway actually just turns out fine. But if you can somehow find some unsalted peanut butter, good on you. Use it. Check the temperature of your boiling honeycomb. And when it reaches 114 Celsius, you're gonna to wanna to add your peanut butter into the oven on the lowest temperature possible for it. All you're trying to do is warm it up a little bit. So just to reiterate, when your honeycomb mixture reaches 140 degrees Celsius, you're gonna to wanna to pull it off the heat as well as your peanut butter out of the oven. You don't want it getting too hot. You will now be creating a mixture of vanilla extract and baking powder. You will be adding one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract and half a teaspoon of baking powder. This will be mixed in at the same time that the honeycomb and peanut butter are being mixed together. I am using imitation vanilla extract because I do not have any of the real stuff. However, if you happen to have any of that, that will make your product even better. Once the candy thermometer reads 140 degrees Celsius, it'll be time to pull it off the stove and it'll be time to grab the peanut butter out of the oven. When pulling these out of the oven or off the stove, make sure that if they are too hot for you to touch with your bare hands like I am doing, you are using hot pads. I have gotten too many burns. I hate burns. Do not repeat my mistakes, please. Now, you're going to want to mix them together and try and stir them together, just folding it over and over again onto itself until it becomes a homogeneous mass. It may not fully come together, but you're gonna to wanna to get it as tight together as possible. And do not forget the mixture of vanilla extract and baking powder. I have forgotten it more times than I wish to admit. Now you're gonna to wanna to prepare a little eight x eight baking sheet thing, pot, thing, pan, thingamajig and you're gonna to want to pat down your mixture onto it. This is gonna be the base of your Butterfinger and just make sure it's completely smooth or as smooth as you can get it. And then I like to throw it in the freezer just to get it cooling down quickly. 
Now for the chocolatey goodness. I like using a bag and a half of just chocolate chips. I prefer milk, you can use dark, whatever works for you. Now, once your Butterfinger mixture has completely solidified, and I love putting it in the freezer simply so it can cool down faster, and in this step when you're handling it, it won't melt on you. You're going to want to make some nice concise cuts evenly so they look the best, and you want to make sure that you do a little bit of sawing and that it doesn't just crumble on you because it's really easy to break these. Now to melt the chocolate. You're going to want to throw it in the microwave and you're going to want to do little bits at a time. Microwave it, stir it, see how it melts because once you start stirring it, it's going to keep melting as you'll see. And so don't overheat this, it'll be really bad. This next step is by far the hardest, most difficult and challenging part of this entire process. There's a lot of different techniques of how you're gonna wanna try and coat these Butterfingers because once you get the chocolate near them, they're gonna wanna break apart, melt, shatter, it's gonna leave parts, it's gonna stick to your fingers, they're gonna pull apart, it's really difficult. But I have a couple good techniques. One of them, is to grab it by the ends with your fingers, dip it completely in, completely coat it, pick it back up by the ends, and just swipe off the bottom. Now you do need to be careful that they don't have too much chocolate on them. In this case, I was a bit careless and I left too much chocolate on the first one. And so once I got to the last few, I started really running out. In fact, the last one, I didn't even have enough chocolate for, so I just popped it in my mouth and ate it but you can always use more chocolate if you want them more chocolatey. Like if you go back to the beginning part where I said use up one and a half bags, you can always use both bags if you want really chocolatey Butterfingers. Or if you just wanna avoid this, make sure that you have plenty of space to dip them in. And there you have it. Get some nice artisan salt and splash it over the top of that nice chocolate. And it'll look beautiful. And as you can see, it's got a nice crunch when you try and snap it. Oh, it's so good. Here we have the finished product, our Butterfinger. This was based on the tutorial from Joshua Wiseman, which I tried to follow to the best of my abilities. And with this final product, I want to show it to my loving mother here on this Christmas day. So, you would like to try it? Sure. Chocolate looks great. It looks like nice honeycomb. Mmm. Mm. It's a nice balance of the honeycomb and the chocolate. It's rich, creamy. It's really nice. It's nicely done. Thank you. Alright, hope to see you guys in the next video.